He was once music's public enemy number one. Something goes wrong, you're out, blacklisted. And former leader of 2PM, one of the biggest boy bands in Asia. It was overwhelming, you know, I didn't really know how to take it. He was the fallen angel who was cast into Korean pop purgatory. But genuine talent always prevails. He shrugged off a social media scandal to become the biggest solo star in Korea. He got taken down by social media, but social media is what brought him back up again. I really think that made him stronger. He takes every situation and grows from it. This is the story of a young man's single-minded determination to build an empire to rival the K-pop establishment. I just think it was meant to be, period. E gives you extraordinary access to a young star who in such a short time has lived a career resembling a carnival ride. Saudi Club. Hold on tight and stay tuned as he reveals all the answers to the most important questions. Yeah, I'll do a reunion. You know, I'm down to do a reunion. This is the E! News Asia Special, Jay Park. At 26 years of age, Jay Park, or Jay Bum, to his Korean following, is a product of the notoriously tough factory that creates Korean pop stars. But he was a maverick, sent into exile, but defied all the odds to conquer music once again. He first catches up with Jay on a two-day excursion to Bangkok, where he has just released his number one single, I Like to Party. This is a country he has had a love affair with since bursting onto the scene in 2009 with his former band, TPM. But since then, his story has taken all the twists and turns of a Hollywood script. Now, he is a solo music icon and the changes are palpable. One, two, three. It's very, very different because, you know, before where I, we didn't really have creative control of anything, now I have 100% creative control. I started my own label, I'm producing my own albums, I'm writing my own songs, I'm working with whoever I get to work with, I get to see my family all the time, I get to see my friends all the time. It's pretty much like 180, just completely different. It's 7.30 a.m. and Jay has arrived at TV3, Thailand's okay. morning show, Morning Story. Word of his appearance has spread like wildfire through his loyal female fan base. Although all eyes are on him, he's relaxed and ready to go. Interpreter by his side, he has decided now that he's his own man to perform one of his more edgier tracks. I think right now, when we talk about Made in Korea, obviously Hyundai, LG, Samsung are household names. But now K pop has been thrown into that mix where now you're starting to see bands just as recognized or even more recognized than brands all over the world. Not only are they being trained to become artists who can dance, who can sing, but they're also being trained to have to act, how to deal with press, how to deal with modeling, how to deal with even foreign languages. Oh! How heavy, how heavy? Um, it's 66 with all this, all this stuff on though. <laughs> Uh, I got this made by this guy named Ben Ballin, a very famous jeweler. He, he makes like Justin Bieber stuff, all the rapper stuff. The funny thing is, every single rapper that gets a deal, the first thing they do is they gotta get a chain. Cause you know, that, that like symbolizes, you know, you've made it in, in, in hip hop. How do I look? Really cool. Saudi <laughs> Jay is known for having the most loyal and dedicated fans in Asian music. He never misses an opportunity to pay tribute to the hordes of followers who fought hard to put him back on the K-pop map. Thank you guys. I'll see you guys tomorrow. They are his personal army who continually bestow gifts on him. 
This fan spent days handcrafting Jay Park chocolate figurines. Now that he's a solo act, his fans have replaced his former band members. Welcome to Thailand. Everyone in Thailand, so love you. Ever since I've gone solo, it's like I've been doing a lot of shows, and you know, at first it was rough. You know, like you don't know how to work the crowd. You start noticing where people react, what people react, what people like, what people don't like. You live and you learn, basically, yeah. One of the significant pieces in hip hop, they get a Jesus piece. That's a very significant piece in hip hop. When he puts on that Jesus piece and he goes on stage, he knows that's part of his uniform. It's like the Superman S on the chest. And he is like a superhero to these fans. He's had to grow up fast without his bandmates. And going from hero to zero, caused him to reassess his reason for being. Jay Park, like many other overseas Koreans, came to Korea with the idea that he could be, maybe, possibly, a K-pop star. Jay Park was born and raised in Seattle, Washington. The son of Korean immigrants, his family moved to the U.S. so his father could start up his travel business. His parents could never have believed that the move to the States would play such a pivotal role for their son. It paved the way to him experiencing a treasure trove of musical influences, which would shape his signature brand of Korean pop two decades later. He never want to be a you know, star or never want to be a you know, artist or anything. Just He just want to dance you know, with his friends. I uh, made a group of friends and we started practicing together and they had a crew and we always danced together so it only made sense for me to join their crew. And that was A1. When I first saw him, I thought he was really cool, you know, because he was, he got the spiky hair, he got the bangs coming down like this, like, like, like a cartoon character. I think he really liked, you know, power moves and the showy stuff, you know, all the spinning and all. That was more of his style. Around this time, Jay's sense of family responsibility and leadership qualities came to the fore. He got kind of into some trouble with money. You know, people call house, you know, you need to pay back the loan. Like looking for my mom, we'd always answer the phone and my mom would never want to answer the phone. Seeing that, it's like, it's not good. So that's why I always wanted to make money, just so I could support the family, so like they didn't have to get those calls and they didn't have to worry about money. So it's like, I wanted to do something about it. The financial pressures at home affected Jay's school grades, but it would be through an incredible twist of fate that would set him on the path to stardom. You know, my mom one day, she was like, there's this audition thing for JIP. You should go audition. And I didn't know what it was. I thought it was like a contest where if you get first place, you get like a thousand dollars or something like that. So I was like, oh, you know, okay, I, I can do it. And at the very end, they call my name. And they're like, oh yeah, wanna meet your son? Wanna fly him out uh, to become a trainee? Yeah, I think he considered like a two weeks, three weeks, you know, whether whether he go to Korea or not. It wasn't very easy decision, you know, that we let him go, up, but uh, he didn't really want to go either, you know. After much deliberation, his parents left the decision with the 15-year-old Jay, but there was a force of nature at work. These management companies were the ones who were funding, who were finding ways to develop these acts, not only for the local market, but more and more for the global markets. Jay got on a plane and flew across the Pacific Ocean. It would be six years before he would return to Seattle. Even when he said he was going to Korea to become a singer, I didn't believe him. I thought he was just going to Korea for a vacation. I wasn't used to the, the strict schedule that they had for everything. Dancing was, for me, was supposed to be fun, but it was like very strict, like do this, do that, do that. And um, there's certain ways you can speak to people that are older. You have to speak, you know, say certain things to people, act a certain way. So I didn't know all that. I wasn't used to all that. I wasn't used to the food. I couldn't speak the language. I didn't have any friends here. My earlier experiences in Korea were, weren't very good for me, because I was young, like I had to get used to it. Jay's longing for home was so intense, he wanted to fly back home to the U.S. But his dad intervened. It was a you know, nightmare you know, to, to him. And uh, so I just, you know, just to keep an eye on him and then you know, staying with him. And that's all I can do it. His employers, JYP, one of the biggest entertainment companies in Korea, came up with a grand plan of creating 2PM the biggest boy band in the country. They were quick to spot his talent and leadership skills. I felt like 
I was in no position to lead anyone, you know, because I felt I was not skilled enough. I couldn't sing very well. I couldn't speak Korean. Like the only thing I had was dancing. Uh, 그 전에 이제 어, 2P 멤버 활동할 때는 여러 그 특징을 가진 그 멤버들 중에 하나였거든요. 그때는 리더였고 또 춤을 잘 추었고. The early days were far from glamorous. Jay and the band had not yet performed in public. This intense show business training would last an incredible four years. Once you get out there, you're out there for the public to see. They're not going to go be easy on you. So you got to make it hard for them to say negative things about you. you know? So you want to be ready. Basically, the company prepares you for that. You know, when you're young, you can, you know, you can do that. But it just gets, gets kind of like boring, you know? Every day the same. Eventually, the band was ready. The four-year formula delivered instant success. Jay, as leader, drew the spotlight. I didn't really take a step back to, to look at everything like, oh man, we're really big. It wasn't like that. It was just like, okay, work, 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 you know? As the band were riding high in 2010, five years earlier, an innocuous email conversation with a friend from the U.S., written during his trainee days, was to bring his career to a screeching halt. The email, in which Jay wrote of being homesick while also detailing the culture shock that was leaving him unsettled and uncertain of his future in Korea, was somehow mysteriously leaked to the media. The consequences were devastating. JYP made a snap decision and told Jay to pack his bags. The lead singer of an outrageously popular boy band in Korea has fled that country and landed here in western Washington. One of the most popular pop stars in South Korea is holed up in, of all places, at his parents' modest home in Edmonds. His father tells us his son is confused right now and doesn't want to talk. I got a call from JIP where, you know, they, they said, oh, because of this and this and this, you've got to terminate your contract. And I said, okay, you know, do what you got to do. I terminated my contract, I was free. Overnight, he was erased from the history of Korean pop. It could happen like that. You know, there's a lot of cases in Korea where that stuff like that happens. You could be the biggest star ever, and, you know, something goes wrong, you know, you're out, blacklisted. He was too big for that band as it is. You know, people could hate me for saying that, but that's just my personal opinion. They don't really have a guidebook on how do you resuscitate, how do you bring back a K-pop star from a situation like that. To this day, it is still unknown just who was behind the damaging leak and whether it was intended to bring down this rising Korean star. Coming up. So, you know, after that happened, I didn't know if I was ever going to go back. After four grueling years of training and becoming the leader of Korea's biggest boy band, the email scandal turned a nation against him and all his success in stardom vanished. He parted ways with former employers JYP who sent him back to the USA. The mysterious circumstances of the sudden departure from his band have become the stuff of legend. And people are still speculating as to how and why it happened. 또 실제로 그 저의 벤더테인먼트 떠날 때 어, 그런 단어를 써가면서 그 떠나게 된 배경을 설명했거든요. 근데 그 다음에 재범 씨가 어떤 일을 겪었는지 그게 어떤 일 때문에 어, 소속사와 갈등을 빚게 됐고 양쪽이 결별하게 되는지는 정확히 아직까지 드러나지 않고 있습니다. They were my boys at one time, you know? Just because, like, I left JRP, I hate to. No, I don't hate to, you know? But, you know, as far as the reunion goes, I'll do a reunion. You know, I'm down to do a reunion. Although Jay was the leader of a band that has racked up gold records and millions of fans, after being sacked by the band's backers, Jay was left with nothing to show for his years of hard work and dedication. I didn't want to spend my parents' money. I've been in Korea for like three, four years, didn't really have anything to show, except for, you know, a bunch of hate comments online. 
the wheels of fortune had stopped spinning for Jay. He was forced to take up a minimum wage job changing tires in a backstreet garage in Seattle just to make ends meet. I really think that made him stronger. He's got this optimistic character, you know what I mean? So I think he really learned a lot from that, I guess. One night after a 12-hour shift at the garage, Jay dared to dream again. He picked up a laptop given to him as a gift by some of his fans in Korea. Jay had an idea. Beautiful girls all over the world. I heard the song, Nothing On You, on the radio. I, like, oh, I love this song. I should do a cover of this and put it up on my YouTube. I got nothing on you, baby. Nothing on you, baby. And it went super viral. It got 2 million views in one day. That video got Jay back on the map, back on the radar, and there was opportunities for him to come back. That laptop was his lifeline and proved to be a launch pad to a new solo career. This was the spark, which to everyone's surprise, reignited interest in Jay's talent. For the first time ever, no one's telling me, do this, do that, do this, do this. I'm completely on my own. Now I was kind of like reluctant to, to really like get just straight up get back into it. Soon, the Seattle exile was over. It was time to return and take on the Korean pop establishment, this time on his own terms. When he arrived at Incheon Airport, Jay found out he could not slip back into Korea undetected. It was overwhelming, you know? I didn't really know how to take it because it's like, I felt like I had to put in that much work for it to get that much love. So I, I felt like I was very undeserving. I wasn't prepared for anything because I didn't know what to expect because I had no idea what anything was like. I didn't even know how people made songs. I didn't even know that when people sing, I didn't even know those are notes. I had no idea. The realization that he was a solo act without any original songs or professional support network was his new challenge and he would need to grow up all over again. I didn't have any of my own songs. I was doing shows for like 15,000 people with like three, four cover songs. And my scene back then wasn't very good. My rapping wasn't very good. I didn't have any like choreographers with me at that time. So it was like my performances and everything were very, very amateur. So I was like, okay, I got to start releasing albums, my own songs. A lot of the stuff, it doesn't work over here. They're not used to the melodies. They're not used to the, the beats. They're not used to my lyrics. They just follow what works. Like, uh, okay, it worked for them, it worked for us. If you're an artist, you can't have someone else draw a drawing for you and call yourself an artist. That doesn't make sense. Jay Park is a very unique case because he came into the system, but broke out of the system. And even though he tried to sort of play within the rules, not only did he break some rules, but I think he's in some ways, in many ways, he's changed the game. Jay puts a great deal of emphasis on his relationship with his followers, making himself easily accessible to his loyal fan base. This is something that is unique for a Korean-based music star. I have generally older fan base in Korea, but in other countries, they're more K-pop fans. They tend to be a little bit younger, like 20s, 17, 16, 18. In Korea, they're like, oh. Jay may have the most dedicated fans in Korea, but they are also the shyest. I think through his whole experience, his connections with his true fans, his real fans, his hardcore fans, conditioned him to be himself, conditioned him to be real, conditioned him to be honest. And that's something that's often rare in this Korean music industry where things can be so packaged, so polished, so manufactured. It was almost rebellious that he was trying to be real. Jay continued to work hard and stay true to his vision, making all the big decisions on his own. How to dress, what to sing, what and when to release. So it was a no-brainer for him to start his very own record label, calling it AOMG after his Art of Movement b-boy troupe. I don't join with people that are, are like already big and just kind of feed off them. People close to me, I want to make them big and, and, and shine my light on them, you know what I'm saying, and, and, be, and grow together. 
새로운 거를 뭐 만들고 싶고 그 다음에 지금 AOMG를 만든 거는 뭐 어떤 힙합이라든지 R&B라든지 He understands hip hop culture. You know, these guys they break dance, they dance, they do certain things, they all bring it together. They're not just in there to get famous to make money. It's more than that. Right now he's focused on his AOMG label, all his artists and everybody else, and just basically getting this out there and generating income. Coming up. By far is the biggest thing I'd ever done. Jay Park has bounced back to be one of the biggest selling solo acts in Asia. It's been a manic roller coaster ride, once leader and spokesman of the biggest K pop boy band 2PM. His former employer's JYP sacked him as the result of an online faux pas, but he miraculously survived the fallout and returned to conquer Korean music, and this time he had the reins. The adoration and success that Jay enjoys has brought many opportunities. His second skyrocket of success has launched him into the center of television popularity into the recently launched Korean version of the immensely popular American TV series Saturday Night Live. They wanted me to host, I hosted it. The response was so good that they wanted me to come back and become a a cast member, and I was like, let's do it. Freshman, freshman. He's like good at everything, you know? He's good at acting, dancing, singing. I was there's no other show like it. They touch on very touchy subjects. Their humor is very sexually explicit, and people aren't used to that here, but they're getting warmed up to it. Probably one of the most pivotal moments and milestones in Jay's career was his MTV World Stage performance in Malaysia, where he headlined above none other than Justin Bieber. The Malaysian front page of the newspaper, they said, Bieber upstaged by Korean superstar Jay Park. That's what the headline came out to be. So upstaging Pop's biggest heartthrob must come with a fair amount of attention. He's got a lot of female fans, you know? I think that's the bulk of his fan base. It's crazy. I've never experienced anything like this until we came to Korea. He's so good at keeping girls like away from distracting him from what he wants in his music. Like it's not like I've completely ruled out girls out of my life. It's just like, oh, she's my girlfriend. Like I love her. That's all I'm gonna think about, and I'm gonna text her every five minutes. Like I can't be doing that right now. That's how I was back when I was like 21. But you know, right now I just got like too many things going on, too many people depending on me for me to kind of get sidetracked because of, you know, a, a love interest or whatever. Try telling that to the hundreds of girls that have turned up to Seoul's trendy Hongdae district with dreams of becoming Mrs. J Park. For Jay Park, all roads leads to this party, the launch of his AOMG record label. It's very exciting just to see where it all leads and very excited to see where it all goes. Follow me inside, AOMG, let's go. It's a huge sense of achievement for Jay, especially considering his almighty fall from grace. He's now risen to the top of his game and is conquering Asian music once more.
I see Jay doing fast food chains. You know what I mean? I see Jay having bicycles. I see Jay doing movies. You know, I just see him in so many different areas. The fact that he's gone through so many experiences in such a short amount of time that most people don't go through an entire career, but yet has not stayed down, but gotten back up as he's getting older and as he's getting wiser, I think he's only getting better. My life has been a roller coaster, for sure. I want to change history, that's my goal. I want to go a completely different way and, and, and make my own path and, and change history and be like a legend.